Lockdown is deadlier than COVID. I wrote that a year ago, which is why I now sit on this side of the house. Hey, welcome to News You Can Use. I'm your host, BG. You might remember this. One year ago, in the height of COVID, MPP Roman Baber spoke out against COVID lockdown mandates right here in Ontario, effectively going against his party leader, Premier Doug Ford. The result? Mm -mm. He was expelled from the Conservative caucus. Now, before we go any further, I needed to do a few things, like subscribing to this channel, tapping that notification bell, and make sure to follow us across all of our social media. Those details are in the description below. So one year since he was removed from the caucus, now serving as an independent, Roman Baber is here to tell his side of the story and what all went down. Let's bring him in. I think Premier Ford himself disagrees with his own government policy. The Premier agrees with me, and so do most government members. This is all a show. All of this is a show. Except they do not have the courage to admit it, and they allow the catastrophe to go on. Roman Baber, MPP for York Center, thanks so much for joining us here on News You Can Use. Good to be with you, Brandon. Well, I'm excited to speak with you. Um, interesting time, too. I mean, we look back, this has almost been one year since uh, you made headlines across the country after Premier Doug Ford ousted you out of the Conservative caucus here in Ontario because you expressed your views on how you felt about lockdowns. Do you still hold those views? Absolutely. So my proposition was that COVID is a very serious infection. Mm -hmm. It can be very dangerous to some demographics in particular, but that doesn't mean that we don't need to factor in the toll of the lockdown. Mm -hmm. And that's essentially what I asked for. So for instance, we've seen from public health, the deaths from overdose are up 80% year over year. We know, according to the Canadian Medical Association, that more than 4,000 Canadians already died because their surgeries were delayed. We know that there's a mental health catastrophe across the province. And perhaps instead of locking down 15 million Ontarians, focus protection on those that need it most. I understand, I understand what you're saying because I think there's a lot of people, you know, two years into this that are looking at the ripple effects of what these lockdowns have, uh, you know, have done. And I think that, I think there's a conversation for that. But at the time that you came out with what you said, do you think that was the right time for that? Look, I, I don't regret trying to save lives. And, and that was the premise behind what I tried to do. It was easily foreseeable. At the same time, we also knew that most of the deaths, and according to um, Statistics Canada, more than 80% of all deaths were in long-term care homes. Mm -hmm. So why not focus our resources where the risk actually is, mm -hmm. but not lock down 15 million Ontarians by making them sick? You know, the accounting of the deaths that people experience because of other things like the opioid crisis and delayed surgeries, there are still a lot of people who say, if we didn't proceed with the lockdowns, what would have been the number of deaths experienced by COVID? For sure. Is that, do you factor that into your calculation? Absolutely, but what you're describing is based on modeling and it's somewhat hypothetical because it's not about how many people get COVID, it's about who gets COVID. If you and I get COVID and 100,000 people like you and I, we're probably gonna be okay and our hospitalization is not gonna nudge up. But if you get a single, you know, it's the probably that the health experts were worried about and wanted to prevent the probable number. But Brandon, we know who COVID affects. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that every life is precious, but we also have to look at the lives lost due to our pandemic response. Mm -hmm. If we know that most of the risk is in congregate settings, if we know that primarily in Alberta, for instance, they keep very good statistics as to who dies from the virus. And regretfully, it's folks with serious, very serious comorbidities. Mm -hmm. So we need to focus protection on those that need the protection. Otherwise, the virus is so transmissible that it's very, very difficult to stop. But essentially, the argument you're making is based on modeling. Mm -hmm. And regretfully, all the modeling we've seen from the science table is wrong time and time again. At the beginning of this most recent lockdown, Premier Ford and Christine Elliott came out and they said that one out of 100 people that gets Omicron is going to be in a hospital. And we know that that turned out to be Absolutely false. But it was very infectious. Like, it, Omicron spread it's like wildfire. very infectious. But the metric was hospitalizations. Mm -hmm. And it's because of hospitalizations that were in lockdown. They said one out of every hundred people is going to be in a hospital, and our hospitals are going to be overwhelmed. But clearly, that did not happen. I was very disillusioned a couple of weeks ago when finally the Minister of Health, Christian Elliott, came out and said, we need to start differentiating between hospitalizations with COVID versus hospitalizations 
due to COVID. But now, lo and behold, we're told that almost half the hospitalizations in the hospital are actually incidental with COVID as opposed to due to COVID. And that is something that we should have known as we devise very, very serious uh, public policy that has tremendous effect on people. You brought up an interesting point about how the government, you know, biggest priority was preserving the healthcare system. A lot of people have said that COVID kind of unveiled the curtain to how underfunded the healthcare system actually was. Now, your government, you were part of a government that was in power for, has been in power for almost four years now. Doesn't that, some of that responsibility lay at your guys' feet? 100%. The chief medical officer was asked, what is the difference in the science between all those countries that are now opening up versus Ontario? Why is the science different over here? And his answer was clear. Every jurisdiction has different healthcare capacity and has different healthcare ability. And what we're doing is we're basically preserving our capacity. He acknowledged that it's not the science of lockdowns mm -hmm. that is necessary to combat COVID. What is necessary is a vibrant and well-functioning hospital capacity. People are asking, well, Roman, what's your proposal to address this crisis? And it's clearly there in the recommendation section of my letter. In addition to return to normal and be fair about the narrative, it was also protect long-term care and build hospital capacity. Two years later, we have less hospital capacity, we have less hospital staff now mm -hmm. than we did in March 2020. Doug Ford had one job to do and he failed to do it, and that is to build up to ho our hospital capacity to respond to, to whatever's coming next. And it, it, we've seen this historically and we're continuing to see this now. Have you and Doug Ford spoken since you were ousted? No, we have not. Have you spoken to other members of the PC caucus? Yeah. I'm, um, what, what is that? What are those conversations like? Look, I, I, I still have a lot of friends mm -hmm. in the Ontario PC caucus, but I think there's no question, and that's something that a lot of folks wanted to know. Do I have the support of the Ontario PC caucus on my standpoint? Do and you? I would, absolutely. Privately, a lot of people have expressed support for my position. In fact, the Premier himself, Doug Ford himself, has been quoted multiple times saying he definitely agrees with Roman on the effect of the lockdown. Mm -hmm. However, Doug was unwilling to make the political decision to abandon the previous course, to face the criticism, to face cancel culture in the face and do what's right and end the lockdowns. Remember what the Premier said on March 13, 2021. He was at Centennial College and he said, quote, no politician will disagree with a medical officer. Disagreeing with a medical officer is like tying a noose around your neck and going off a bridge. I'm telling you the truth. It's not going to happen. Close quote. So who, who privately has supported you? Well, I won't reveal any names, but there is no question that there's a number of MPPs and ministers that held the same view I held. This is not news to anyone. Mm -hmm. uh, Doug Ford is now quoted saying, no one hates lockdowns, no, more, no one hates shutdowns more than he does, but he holds the world record in lockdowns. He, held, he was proud last spring that he had the harshest lockdown in North America. Ontario had the lo longest school closure in the world, mm -hmm. even though kids, thankfully, uh, respond well to this virus. Mm -hmm. And the virus is so transmissible that it's very difficult to stop. Do you think Doug Ford has failed as leader? I think Doug Ford... Uh, has disappointed so many Ontarians that were looking to him. do you think he has him. failed? Yeah. We're looking to him for leadership. And instead, Ontario had one of the most regressive COVID responses in the world. I asked Christine Elliott in the House, how many nurses have we trained? Mm -hmm. She doesn't have an answer. That is what we need to be asking. What are we doing now to beef up our healthcare capacity? And we're actually artificially hurting our capacity. We're hurting our capacity by... Um, suspending and, and firing nurses that made a different medical choice than you and I had. You agree that nurses should be getting more pay right now? Well, at the very least, we need to allow for free bargaining. And, and we have legislation. So you want to repeal Bill 100%. And okay. in fairness, I voted for that bill as a member of the government. Do you regret that decision? Well, in retrospect, it's clear that that wasn't the right, given where inflation is right now, mm -hmm. that that isn't the right choice. But given where we are, in the pandemic, it's absolutely okay to admit mistake yeah. and say, you know what, we need to fold on Bill 124 and we need to compensate nurses appropriately. I want to know from you, we have an election happening in June. Will you be running again? It's a difficult decision to make and I'm, I'm talking to 
my friends, to, to my loved ones, uh, to make that decision, and we'll have a decision shortly. But you must know where you kind of want to go here. I had a remarkable experience mm -hmm. as the first time elected MPP. It's no secret that, of course, I had a really tough time uh, being ousted from government, but I also feel that I've given a million of Canadians a voice, mm -hmm. and there's no shame in that. Yeah. And uh, if my time is politics and coming to an end, that's fine. And if I have a lot more in me to give, then that's good too. We shall see. Well, you better make sure that you let us know first. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a call. I have one last question for you. Come June, who do you want to see as Premier? Do you see it being Doug Ford re-elected? Do you see Andrea Horvath? Or would you prefer Stephen Del Duca? Is none of the above an option? Well, you're going to have right. to, I mean, you, as, uh, folks ask me that question. You're still question. an Ontarian. I know folks, you, I mean, whether you run or not, I mean, you, st you still, you know, there's still going to have to be a leader. So who would you prefer to see? Is there a rhinoceros party in Ontario? <laughs> there used to be, I like those guys. <laughs> Brandon, look, here's what, here's what I really care about. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm prepared to endorse any leader mm -hmm. that will say, we have to move out of this. Mm -hmm. We have to move forward. I would like a commitment that we're never going to be in lockdown again. And in fact, most Canadians would do too. I can't let you leave without saying, do you support the Truckers Freedom Convoy? Um, I support the Truckers Peaceful and Law-Abiding Protest. Okay. Right? I definitely think that folks, have, folks should be able to speak their mind and protest when their ability to put food on the table is dependent on their agreement to take medication. I'm pro-voluntary vaccination, I'm mm -hmm. vaccinated myself, but I certainly support peaceful protest. All right, Roman, thank you so much for joining us on Easy Can News, I appreciate it. Good to be with you, Brandon. Hey, BG Squad, thanks so much for checking out our channel. And listen to this, we have more great content for you, like this video right here and this video right here. By the way, don't forget to subscribe to this channel right now and tap that notification bell.